Hey y'all, we're doing a little bit different today, happening live uh, this afternoon. Uh, I'll, I'll still be live at 8.30 uh, p.m. tonight too, you guys. I just wanted to jump in and uh, I need to make samples of the new embroidery kits that we have uh, coming out soon. I need to make uh, the cover image so I can photograph it and everything. So I thought I'd just stitch all that live here. So I printed out a copy of it for myself that I'm going to just use as a guide. I'll write notes on there if I need to, but I think this is all going to be pretty straightforward. I think I'm going to just do basically backstitch for everything and then like some little French knots, I think is all. So I hope everyone's having a lovely afternoon. It just started snowing again here. More snow. Forever snowing. All right, I'm going to stitch this with two strands of thread. So I'm going to do that double up um, loop method. I'm thinking I'll probably use this color in some of the other patterns as well. Okay. Ooh. Oh, Robin, I'm so sorry to hear that. Ugh. I hope everything's going to be okay. Uh, that's no good. Sorry, are we going to go through that? Hey, Jessica. I wish, I w wish it would snow in San Antonio. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's thread up. So I've kind of been using, actually, I did a little tatting project and I used this, um, these strawberry containers have like a little, little enclosed piece. I've kind of been using that for my garbage and I've kind of liked doing that because then I can still carry this around everywhere and uh, my trash will be out of the way. So, all right, let's do that loop method and get started on this. Let's see, what would be a good path? I think I'm just gonna go left to right. And like I said, I think, I think I'm just gonna do this whole thing in back stitch. Um, oh, Kimberly's asking, uh, flowers are they, or fantastic flowers, yay, are, they, are these big enough to make a quilt block? Um, how many different flowers are in the collection? So there'll be five in this particular collection, although we've, we have a matching set of different flowers that are already available. There's five of those as well. So it would be like 10 in the same style, but this is, um, this new set has five. Hey, Nellie Craft. Um, oh, Robin says the 26 years I lived in San Antonio, it snowed maybe two times. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so they're, they're small. So this one, they're about like, you know, three inches by three inches, uh, if I'm, you know, sticking them in a square. And the fabric piece is um, about f five inches square, six inches square. So they would make small blocks. Uh, I've seen people put like nice big borders around it. So that's a way to expand the block if you're wanting to sew it into a quilt block. So they're definitely smaller than our normal, um, well, than our other size kit, our eight inch kits. This is a four inch hoop, so that's, I can show the difference here. So here is, here's like our, our eight inch kit. This is the one that we just finished. And then here is the four inch kit. So that'll be kind of the difference in, in size. But yeah, they're not, um, yep, are all the 10 kits the same size? They are, so they're all the four inch size. And I'm planning on doing more, like I just, I'm having so much fun just drawing these flowers, like I could do it forever. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking of definitely doing more and staying consistent with the style and, and size. So we'll keep adding to it, like, you know, it's been requested like, California flowers or Australia flowers or, you know, just them from different seasons and stuff too. So we'll, we'll keep going with these. I, I do like this. 
Yep, I design um, I design all the embroideries, Nelly. Ooh, I don't think I have this very tight on here. I think I just, I don't think I ever tightened it. That was weird. <laughs> Must have taken it on and off. Oh, Adrian says, hopping in for my lunch break to say hi to everyone. That's sweet. So I'm on, uh, we're doing just like a kind of impromptu uh, live. I knew I was going to do a live sometime this week um, to work on this, but it's uh, where um, I'm just kind of popping in at a different time here. So it'll be interesting to see who's available to come see and stuff. Oh, Kimberly's asking, can we see the other or what the other ones are? I have them all right here. Uh, so I'm, I am planning on doing a longer stitch along on Saturday. So I think today I'll just try and stitch this one up, but, and we'll see how, how that goes. But I, I do want to stitch all of these on Saturday. So Saturday we might do like a big long marathon. All right. We have the snowdrop here, uh, with these colors. Uh, I think those are just like fun little ground cover flowers. We have uh, the grape hyacinth with these four. So it's first blooms is the name. So it's like all the all the ones that come up like right after the snow or like through the snow. Some of them got the daffodil and uh, the tulip. All those fun early flowers. My mom's friend sent uh, sent her tulips already. Cause she's further south, and then the the crocus or the the snow crocus. I'm just calling it the crocus though. Hey Paula. So that's the plan. But yeah, so all the other ones. <laughs> I don't know how long it's gonna take to do do just one. I'm kind of testing that too. Actually, what time is it? Okay, I'm going to say I started this at like, oh, I think I started at like 2.15. Okay, so I just kind of want to time how long it takes to make. And I know I'm going to be yammering and kind of going at whatever pace doing it to. Uh, Wannabe Quilter, this is a size, uh, this is a, four, or a <laughs> I almost said a size 14 something something. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's a four inch hoop. <laughs> it's a four inch hoop, so the design is about within three inches is about three inches oh thanks Kimberly yeah I'm, I'm excited for them and so we we've done four in the past or not four we've done five of these designs in the past and those are already available and I just they're just so much fun to draw that I've been kind of just wanting to do more I think we're gonna crawl up this side do do this one right away But yeah, they're, they're fun to draw. <laughs> and uh, there's like, I always want to do more after I finish the five. So I'm like, yeah, I'll stick with it. And <laughs> the problem is though, working on these and it's snowing outside, I'm getting like more and more uh, s spring fever here, which is crazy. Uh, are you using two strands for the back stitch? Yes, I'm using, um, Robin, I'm using two strands for for this whole series. And I think I did that with the last five too from the earlier series. Those were the summer blooms um, from last year. I'm using two just cause it's a slightly thinner stitch than if I use three strands. And uh, um, I just think it's a little more delicate with a, that slightly thinner line. And I think that that fits with these flowers. So, so I'm doing them all with, with two strands. Oh yeah, I love um, having a, a needle minder. So it's it, you can actually put this on your piece, but I just kind of like having it um, on the side nearby, and I just kind of throw my throw my needle at it when I'm not using it. But yeah, I, I've looked around my table so many times for like my missing needle, uh, so I'm really liking using the needle minder. I need to get more of them made. Um, this is our first needle minder, and we're we're sold out of them. 
So I'm going to get more of those made probably this weekend here. Or ordered, I suppose. Oh, hey, Kimberly. Kimberly says I was watching a cooking show and the live notice came up. <laughs> That's funny. This would be cute as, as quilt blocks, though. I haven't made uh, um, them into really much yet because um, I've just been kind of leaving them as my samples to take photos of. So it's been fun seeing what you guys make out of them. But yeah, little quilt blocks would be so fun. Oh, Kimberly says, I didn't realize you were here till now. Nope, just I'm just kind of popping in today. Um, I knew I was going to just kind of pop in this week. And um, turns out today is one of those days. And uh, But on Saturday... For sure, I'm going to come in, and, and that's going to be for a long time. Today, I'm just going to see how far I get on on, um, on this design. I don't know if I'll quite finish it, but I, but I might. I don't know. I have a little bit of a schedule coming up, but um, we'll see how long I can work on this today. I'm hoping to finish it. And then Saturday, I'm just going to like binge do all of it. <laughs> so we got, we got four other ones. It's a series of five, and I just need to get them done so I can photograph them, and uh, we'll be releasing them soon. We're kind of doing a surprise release. I mean, we're, it's, you know, not that big of a surprise, but the actual day that we're going to release it will be a surprise. So we're going to do, like, a special sale just for that day um, for people who come that day. And, it, and uh, the way we're doing it is we've listed the designs on the just as a group on our website right now and I, I i put a link in there otherwise you know it's in my profile i think i gotta go another stitch down here i think i messed this up i'm gonna do one more down uh but anyway um that it's it shows the listing for a product but um they're not actually available yet there'll be a button on there like where it says like you know where you'd normally hit like the add to cart it says email me when available so if you're wanting like any notification uh you know whether it's for the bundle or you know later we'll be putting we'll be um doing pdfs of this and stuff too and they'll be sold individually as well but we just have a listing for the bundle um if you click that email when it's available, then you'll be notified on that special day that that we're going to be doing an extra sale. Um, and it'll be just for that day, and then we'll release it with emails and stuff for real, um, telling everyone the day after. Uh, so the only way to know is to, to click that, um, get on that email me when it's available uh, list. You don't have to actually buy anything and you don't actually have to buy the bundle later um, by clicking that you could um, just do a PDF or something I'm gonna jump up here I think I have some enough thread left for most of this but you'll get that notification still so that's you know with no obligation it's not a pre-sale or anything like that oh Kimberly says I was trying to finish a sweater for my daughter and was sick of my audiobook. <laughs> well, glad you could join us. Will you be able to order all 10 ones done? Oh, the first five and these new ones. Oh, I mean, definitely. Um, I hadn't thought about putting it as one big listing, though. I could do that. Um, so I, the, the ones that are available now are available as single PDFs, single kits, um, and then also a bundle of all five, um, which is discounted. So those are available now, and I'll probably be doing the same thing with, um, with this set. So it'll be individual PDFs if you're, you know, just wanting, you don't need all the stuff. Uh, and then also individual kits and then the bundle there as well. But maybe I should do like a bundle of all of them. That'd be kind of cool. Will you be able to buy the 10 printed on fabric without the hoop and floss? Um, I'm not sure if we'll do that, Linda. Um, we do have the PDF option, um, 
but that's yeah without the fabric and the, the pre-printed. I'll have to think about that. We might be able to do something like that. I'll, I'll have to think about that a little bit. See if we can do that. All right. I, I have like, I don't know. I could get a few more stitches out of here, but I'd have to travel to a different area of the block to do it. So we're just going to weave in. I don't have very much space to weave in here either because we're near the hoop, but eh, this is plenty. All right. Scissors, where'd you go? Now oh, already lost the scissors. All right, let's grab grab a fresh one. Ooh, let's let's pick let's pick a cute color. Let's pick a color that'll match. Ooh, purple. Let's do the purple. Put the other ones in <laughs> in the bin there. I had a yellow one. It's probably hiding underneath. Oh yeah, there it is. We'll trade off between uh, the straight yellow one and the the stork purple one. They're they're kind of friendly. They look nice together. But with this crocus one, let's let's do the purple. All right. Ooh, and I've like I said, I'm gonna use this for my little trash bin. I think that's kind of fun. So let's throw that in there. All right. Uh, I think I'm gonna do just all the green first, just to get it out of my way. Here. You know what? These extras can go in my little craft bin. So I, I like using these trays. I just ordered some more. So I don't have any um, online right now, but I do. Uh, I am ordering some more. And I just love that I can like contain my whole project there while I'm working on it. Um, so the green I just put to the side there. All right. So let's get another strand out of here. Oops, just one. Oh, is the PDF version an iron-on type of thing, or how does that work? So, uh, the iron-on or the um, PDF comes with the instructions, and then it comes with a pattern that you can trace, and it also comes with a reversed pattern. Um, so you could you could um, print it like reverse if you had like an iron-on ink pen or something. Um, I, my favorite way to, to do use the PDFs is, well, either tracing. I mean, tracing is easy peasy. Um, and, you know, this, these are small designs, so it's not, it wouldn't be that hard to just trace. Wouldn't take that long. Um, you know, and you can just put your, you can print it out. So that's the thing. Oh, you could also actually, I've seen people, like, put it on an iPad or something, too, and then trace over that. You'd probably want to lay something down, like an extra piece of paper or something first, just so you're not like actually writing on your iPad. Um, but anyway, uh, if you have a printer, you can print it out and then trace it. Um, the, the other way I like doing that is using some stick and stitch, uh, which you know runs through a printer as well. So you, you need a printer, and then then you wouldn't have to trace it. You just print the design to the stick and stitch, and then you stitch right through. It's a water soluble stabilizer. All right, where to next? We got this little dude popping out there. I'm not quite sure how to get to him. I might I might leave that guy for later and just focus on these bottom ones here and see how far I can get. So let's let's start here. I'm gonna do that little loop method of starting again. I think I'll just go up here and yeah, that's my that's my path. All right, loop method again. I folded it in half and we're just catching that loop. So there's no knots on the back. It's just easy peasy a, a little loop like that. And then we can just start right away. Oh yeah, you could definitely send it to a friend with a printer to print out a copy. But yeah, the PDFs are also nice because then if you want it on um, like a different fabric than just, just this white fabric, 
like you could put it on to, you know, like your jean coat. <laughs> That's the first thing that pops into my mind because I, I have that jean shirt jacket thing that I've been adding embroideries to, um, or like a bag or something else. Um, you wouldn't, or even like a pattern fabric that'd be really pretty. This would be pretty on like a dark linen. I think that like a purple linen. Actually, we, we were talking about this. This would be pretty on the purple tea towels that we have, and I kind of want to do one of those. We'll see how that goes. Are you getting a snowstorm? We're scheduled to get one starting late tonight, uh, says Kimberly. We uh, got one yesterday, and, uh, or wait, that was two days ago, and it is snowing right now. Let me look. Yeah, it's it's little flakes. It's like those tiny little flakes that you can barely see, um, but that still, like, accumulate <laughs> and, and are kind of slippery. So, um, yep, it is snowing. I was able to get out a little, I had to go to FedEx in the post office um, earlier, and that was before it, it got started, so that's good. And it's cold, too. It's like five degrees or something, and a little breezy, so it's, and gloomy, so <laughs> it's just overall gloomy. Uh, I'm, I'm really kind of itching for spring. Oh, uh, sorry, Robin, I don't think I... I think I might have missed that question, um, so, uh, and hopefully everything's okay. But yeah, um, feel free to ask again. All right, I'll go up this stem. Where is it the smartest path? How much thread do I have left? I'm just trying to, like, if I go up here, then I'd have to, like, kind of jump down to here, which I don't know if I really want to do. But I suppose I'd have to do that anywhere. Fine, let's just do it. I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, what kind of material can you use for embroidery in general? Um, let me know if that's what you mean. Uh, and I'll talk about that <laughs> until you say if, that, if, if you mean differently. But you can really stitch onto any material. Oh, man, Rock and uh, Robin. Um, well, keep me updated on how that's going. Uh, that's no fun. Uh, but, yeah, you can stitch onto really any fabric you want. Uh, I mean, people have stitched onto, like, leaves before and other things. And, like, you know, you can drill a bunch of holes into wood and, and do it, too. So you can really embroider onto anything, like, literally. Um, so the, the things you're going to want to pay attention to is... Um, well, really, it's going to be about how, like, your needle and the thread work with the fabric. So uh, it might be, I'm, I'm going to just back track down here and then jump over a little bit, I think. But uh, well, so I like stitching on a muslin. So this is a white muslin fabric, uh, which is just like a super basic kind of fabric, but I like it because it's, it's um, typically, or the kind that we get, it has just a a bigger weave, so a more open weave of fabric. So let's let's call it like that. So uh, it's easy for the embroidery needle to go through. And uh, um, I like my size, this is like a size five embroidery needle, which works great for embroidery floss. So the whole idea is that the, the uh, eye of the needle is big enough that you can stick the floss into, but then you want your fabric to match that needle in the sense of it's easy to pull through. So sometimes like if I'm working with a really tightly, tightly woven quilting weight fabric, it totally works, but it's a little harder to pull the needle through, which can get a little bit annoying. Um, you know, you can stitch onto linen. Uh, you can stitch onto uh, even like silk or gauzy material and stuff too it just it just um kind of is whatever whatever you can imagine it, it you can stitch onto jersey too so that's stretchy fabric so you can stitch onto like a t-shirt or sweatshirt 
Um, though that's a little more difficult because it's actually surprisingly it's a little hard sticking the needle through jersey fabric because jersey fabric is tightly uh, tightly stitched. I mean that's it's not woven, but it, it still um, can be a tight fabric. Um, but with a it should still be fine. But since it's so stretchy, you might want a stabilizer of some sort uh, when you stitch. So like that stick and stitch uh, washable stabilizer works good for that. Because it's just going to want to stretch and move a lot more than, than the woven fabric. But yeah, so you can stitch with anything. It just kind of depends on matching the fabric. Um, with your needle and any other thing that might be helpful to stitch with, like a stabilizer. So I don't know, that probably wasn't a great <laughs> explanation, but um, I can answer more specific questions too, for sure. I feel like I'm using up thread really quickly, which is good, I suppose. So I want it to kind of look like a lot of just greenery and then like these purple flowers are, are coming out of it here. Um, I think that will be fine. I'm kind of thinking like it might have been neat to do the stems as a different stitch, but they're so close to the leaves that I think it would be hard to tell the difference. So I think, yeah, I think I'm just going to continue doing all this in back stitch. I like to keep these, um, these flower ones have been simpler too. Oh, uh, uh, is it easy to learn painting thread? So it's, it's not as if it's like difficult in concept, uh, but it does take some practice to do. I mean, you can do it immediately, um, with very little learning, um, but to like really, really get good at it, you know, is going to take some practice. So uh, thread painting is basically a loose, short, or long and short stitch. Sometimes I say short and long stitch. I don't know which is right, long and short or short and long. I don't know. Uh, but it's where you do, it's kind of like a loose, a loose one. So like if we were to fill in one of these leaves, for example, so thread painting is, is basically like filling in a shape and you can almost blend colors. So um, something, you know, I might want to blend like perp this dark purple into light purple within one leaf. So I'd start with some like long and short stitches at the bottom that are maybe the dark purple. And then I do maybe a little bit more dark purple and then I'd bring in the light purple and I'd really kind of stitch within um, like stitch over the top of some of those dark purple ones and it can start to look almost like they're blended together. I know that's not a great, great um, explanation of that easier either, but it is totally doable for a beginner. Uh, it does take some practice. Uh, it's best to use a single strand of thread if you're going to do that. And uh, have some patience because it takes a long time. Oh, uh, English with I says I started to learn it. I can't wait to be a professional. Awesome. <laughs> yes, it's a long and short stitches. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and you know what? Actually, this is like a great size for thread painting. I should maybe try that sometime. Maybe, you know what? We, we have these, um, well, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that tonight, but... We, I'm going to be going live, you know, at my normal time at 8.30 tonight. And uh, um, theoretically, we could take one of these and just for fun, thread paint it um, or like get a start at it. That would be kind of a fun little random project. Yeah, I'm going to finish. I'm going to weave in these ends. It's not enough for me to jump all the way back down and use the thread some more. So that'd be good. that could be kind of fun. Just a random project with some of our excess floss. I'm sure we'll have tons of extra floss from, from this. We could just do this design again, but like thread painted a little bit. 
Yeah, we could give that a try. I'll have to think about that. And I don't have any examples um, right here, but we did do this a little bit uh, a year or so ago, some thread painting on a very small scale like this, and it was just so fun. All right, I think. I mean, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely a different pace, pace of stitching than what, than what just outlining it is for sure. Like we're gonna finish this in like, you know, I don't know, an hour or something or hour and a half. Uh, whereas if I thread painted this whole thing and I got like really into it, I mean, I could be working on it for 12 hours <laughs> or more, you know? Um, actually, we make iron-ons, and then I then I iron it on to, to fabric. All right, I think here, what's my path here? I think I'm going to start here, go here, jump up to here, because it's kind of in, along the lines with my, um, this little bud here. So it'll get covered up, and then I'll come back down here, and then I'll just go be able to go up and down there. I think that's a good path. Let's do it. Oh yeah, the acorn we did thread painting too. I, I keep forgetting about that one. Yeah, I don't have that nearby. I just cleaned up a little bit <laughs> and I, I've been storing my projects um, on this shelf, like my, my like a bun rack like that you'd get in like, that you'd see in like a bakery. <laughs> I store my projects on one of those and I just moved a bunch of those to the basement so I can't even grab any examples. I'll have to do that um, when I'm here on Saturday. So. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be working on like marathon doing the other four of these designs on Saturday and uh, maybe I'll get some other examples of embroidery stuff out just in case, you know, we stock, we talk about like thread painting and stuff again. And I can have some examples nearby. And like, you know, coloring in the embroideries like the color tinting, which is a totally different process, like some of those sort of things. I'll grab. Okay. Almost done with the green. We do have this dude hiding over here yet. So we'll have to take care of that. So maybe I'll have enough thread after this route, although I probably won't. So I might have to start a whole new piece there. That'll be kind of annoying, but oh well. Let's do a forward stitch just to end up at the bottom. All right, and then last little kind of big broad leaf here. So we don't have any snow crocuses by us here. We should plant some, that'd be nice, but I think my parents might, and or they used to at least, and um, oh gosh, where were those? Maybe it is at the new place, I don't know. But anyway, there. this is where you can see like these little buds kind of pop through the um, snow sometimes, which is crazy. Our neighbors here have a lot of, um, like seasonal floral plants in their front yard. They basically t change their whole like front lawn into um, different small blooming bushes and trees and flowers that bloom at different times during the year. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, but I wonder if they have some crocuses. They should be coming soon. Robin says, I like using two strands. I do too. I, I really like that loop method of starting and using two strands is a great excuse to do that loop method. And I do like the more delicate look. It's just a tiny, tiny, tiny hair more delicate or thinner than, um, thinner lines than using three strands, which is my typical go-to amount. 
but I've been doing two strands a little more often since I learned how to do that loop method of starting. It's just so easy that <laughs> it's a good, good enough excuse to use two strands. I'm going to do the French knots last. I typically let those be the last thing. Then I'm not catching my thread on any of them. I think I'll wait to photograph these till I'm all done with them. So I'm, I'm actually probably going to get more of these hoops. I have, all, I have tons of these uh, four inch hoops. So I'll I'll probably just finish them and keep them in, in their individual hoops because <laughs> I photograph them in the hoops for the, for the pattern covers. So the finished ones can just hang out with us while we stitch. All right, I might have enough thread to start at the top there. Yeah, let's... Let's give it a try. So I'm going to weave in this end here. I'm close to the hoop though, so that kind of makes it a little difficult. Okay, that's our second pass. And one more. Good enough. So I, I can't start this with the loop method because I already, I just have, um, you know, this much left. I don't, it's, I don't have a loop on one side. So I'm, I'm going to just try and stitch, like I'm going to leave a little end here to finish that stitch and weave in the end. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to try it, but then I'm going to keep, keep stitching. And I might actually do a forward well, no, let's just let's just try and do all the back stitch. I was thinking maybe I'd try the forward stitch and then a back stitch to save some thread, but we'll see if I need to do that. And I won't have to get won't have to get another piece of green out, I don't think. I don't think I skipped any. No, I think we're good. Oh, currently Celeste says, hey, so fun to see you during the day. Yeah, I, I decided, uh, I don't do this very often, but I decided to pop in today and, and um, I'm trying to do these. I have five of these, in five different flowers, and I want to finish them. Um, so I can take photos of them for the, the covers of the designs of the kit. I thought I'd stitch the samples uh, live here. So today I'm just doing it for a little. Um, I'm hoping to finish this one. And uh, then on Saturday, I'll be here like the whole day. <laughs> I'll be live like several hours because I, I have the four other ones to do. So I think I'm just going to go till they're done or until I just can't anymore. <laughs> That's a possibility too. All right, let's get this last little bit that I kind of saved. So instead of just weaving it in from the get-go, I just left, left this end. We're going to finish the stitch to bring it to the back. There we are. And now I'm going to weave it in too. So back's looking nice yet. Let's throw it in our little garbage chute here. <laughs> I like this for, for my garbage. That's been fun. 
All right, and green is done. So here's my excess. So I'll most likely use this on another design so I don't have to open up uh, another thing. So I'm just going to another um, skein. So I'm just going to kind of, let's just kind of wrap this up and we'll stick it on my tray. I think I'm going to, I'm going to move all the scissors. I'm going to just stick with the purple. Then I can use this tray as more of a project tray instead. So I'll hang all these guys back up. Bye, colorful guys. We might switch them out for a different color later. All right, there we are. Okay, what next? Um, I think maybe I'll do this light purple uh, for these two flowers and then uh, um, then I can get these buds to look like they're in front of them a little bit. So, yep, all right, let's do light purple first, and uh, which is the lilac season color. And then we'll do, um, what do I do with my, <laughs> I'm like, what do I do with my needle minder? It's, it's attached to my embroidery. Uh, but yeah, so we'll do the dark purple after this. And I'm still gonna do that two, strand method where I fold it in half to get like basically double the length that I need. Oh, see, this is the, this is the color that matches, matches the scissors. <laughs> I love that. Um, all right. And we'll do that loop method, the loop method of measurement again. I think we'll use that purple again too in, in other designs. Um, the grape hyacinth one for sure uses that purple. There we go, got my single strand. And let's match the ends. Come here, guy. Oh, Robin says, pleasant surprise. I'm starting dinner with Alyssa. <laughs> yep. I will be, I'll still be here at 8.30 PM too. But I needed to get some work on this done today. Let's see. I think I'm gonna start here and work my way around and then hop over to this one. So I'm still gonna do backstitch for all this. This, is, this whole design is just gonna be backstitch and French knots. So French knots for the middle bud area. All right, get my needle in our little fold. There. There we are. Loop method of starting. That's attached. We can just start. So awesome. I think this green and purple look so nice together. Oh, kind of felt like I had a knot back there, but I didn't. So let's see, how long have we been doing this? For about 45 minutes so far. So yeah, probably an hour and a half to, to finish it maybe. A movie long project or a couple episodes of something. That's how long this feller takes. I was gonna put some music on in the background while we did this, um, but my laptop 
will not connect to Wi-Fi. We had the weird computer, I don't know, it's computer stupid stuff this morning, so. No music today. But hopefully I got that fixed by Saturday. I suppose the iPad works for that too. Didn't think of that. So all these pedals have, you know, a lot of surface area. There's a lot of lines ultimately. So I think these will probably take a little bit longer than the grass. I do. Yeah, I think we'll do this in four stitches. I could have probably stretched that to just three, but I don't know. Four seemed right. Thanks for coming and chilling with me today. I'm just kind of doing some lazy stitching here. That stitch got kind of weird. Yeah, so these kits are not released quite yet um, but we'll notify you um, if you click that email me when they're available <laughs> button uh, in the listing so that's that's how that will work so a couple weeks maybe week maybe i don't know soon though This guy. But yeah, this would be a really fun thread painting it in. I'll have to definitely look into that. Like thread painting it on. Oh, I have some cream color uh, tea towels that it might look really pretty with. Like the purple might look pretty on top. May have to do that. I'll have to look up um, what colors the crocuses are again, because I mean, I'm obviously making them like purple, but. I, I, I would need to look, to thread paint them, I would need to look at like how the colors shift or are they really solid in color? I suspect they kind of go from like light or dark to light a little bit. Maybe, you know, some white like sheen in there. I don't know. So before thread painting, I, I wouldn't be able to just start without, you know, if I'm going for something that looks sort of realistic, I'd have to, um, I'd have to look that up first. Oh, and Speak Lee says I've, I'm self-taught from videos and kits. Oh, nice. Oh, and this is the first time you've seen the loop method. Oh my gosh, isn't it amazing? So I've been stitching for ages as well, and I've just learned about it like, I don't know, six months ago or something. <laughs> so you really can only do it with uh, two strands of thread. Um, Ooh, it's, well, it's fine. You can do it with, uh, or not two strands of thread, an even amount of thread because you're taking a long piece and then folding it in half. And um, so, you know, by the act of folding in half, you're doubling it, meaning it's an even number. So I'm starting with one strand and folding it in half to get that like fold that you do the loop with. And so I'm doing it with two strands. How do you attach this to something? Can you iron it on or do you have to sew it? So you could iron it on. Um, so I would typically sew it onto something else. So I'd maybe like cut around the edge and then like sew it on. But you can iron it on if you get a fusible 
um, a fusible web-like interfacing. Um, the one that I use for applique is called Steam a Seam 2. <laughs> it's just such a stupid name. Uh, Steam a Seam 2. Um, but that you can stick it onto the back and press it, and then you peel, then you can cut it to like the perfect size, like however you want to do it, and then you can iron it onto another, another object, another piece of fabric or bag or, or whatever. Otherwise, yeah, I, I just stitch it to something. Um, you could sew it, sew more pieces onto it, and like, you know, so it's like a quilt block, but that could be turned into a, a tote bag or, or something else too. All right, I think this thread is just gonna get me around one flower. not actually have enough to go around this whole petal. Ah, now nah, we'll have enough. We're good. So I'll get another piece of this purple out. We'll do the um, second flower over here, and then it's just the dark purple for the flowers, and we'll finish it off with a pile of French knots in the middle there. And then this guy's finished. So he'll be ready to be photographed for uh, the kit covers, um, but then, yeah, then I got four more to do, four more of the other flowers. So there's, the other ones are, um, I showed them a little earlier, they're the daffodil, tulip, grape, hyacinth, and snowdrop. So they're the they're first blooms, that's, that's what um, this series is called. And then we have uh, summer blooms that we've done um, once before. I have a little bit more thread, I'm going to just jump over here and stitch some more. Yeah. And those ones match match these. I think we're just gonna, this is kind of a weird way to do it, but I'm gonna do a stitch here and then come back up. I suppose it wouldn't have hurt just to weave in the thread and be done, but I don't know, when you got extra thread, even when I know I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have like more than enough with the next piece, but still. All right, we'll get to the top here and then I'll weave in the end. There we are, so let's weave in this and then I'll start a fresh piece. So just weaving into the backs of stitches back and forth three times. Two. Oh, time to show off one of my brother's candles. Oh, I think I moved it. Oh, they're, we're actually using them, so they're, they're in other places now. Um, my brother has a candle company. Sea to Snow. Kev says, I love thread painting, but I'm terrible at it. It definitely takes some patience and some practice I've I've found for sure I, I I am by no means a pro at it at all I've only done it a, a few times but um yeah I'd love to dig into that some more too and see if I can get better at it all right we're just grabbing our single thread again Zoop, there we are Uh, Kimberly says the summer blooms were, um, it wasn't mum, so the summer blooms were coral bells, uh, zinnia, poppies, um, gladiolus, gladiolus, and, um, one more in there, what's the other one? Coral bells, gladiolus. Oh, Lily. Lily, like a stargazer Lily. All 
All right, let's, okay, so I'm gonna do that loop method again. Oh, see now this, this one I just, there. Um, so I've taken my thread, I folded it in half, so I got the, the fold on, on this side, and I've threaded the two ends, so I brought the two ends together. So I took a piece of thread that was twice as long as I wanted to stitch with, um, so about 48 inches or so, and I put the ends together, threaded those ends, so there's the fold on the other side, and uh, now to start, I think I'm going to start here and go up, then I can get around these. I'm going to just start my back stitch. So this is the loop method of starting. So I'm going to just start my back stitch and we'll, I'm not going to pull the thread all the way through, just a little bit enough to turn around. And then I'm going to go to the back and we'll pull until that loop is about right there. I can see the loop and then just stick your needle into the loop, pull the thread through and we're basically catching that loop. So we're going to keep pulling and pulling and there we go. The loop is holding the thread in right there. So that that's it. We're attached. That's not going anywhere. So then we can flip around and then just start right away. It's so easy. And it looks, I mean, it's like invisible on the back here, right? I mean, there it is right there. It just looks like our stitches just came out of nowhere. So again, it only works with, um, if you if you want to stitch with an even amount of thread. So you couldn't do like three strands or one strand like that, but dang, it's it's nice to just be able to start like that. It also doesn't work well on stitches that you have to go in the same hole right away. Like a, like a chain stitch, for example, you're coming up and then you're going back in the exact same hole. Uh, it doesn't work, the loop method doesn't work very well for that at all. Um, but for um, a stitch like a back stitch, it works great. I have like one little funny bit coming out of there. All right, we're fine now. And it's just so fast, you can just get started stitching right away to one less thing to weave in and no knots. I like it. All right, we're just approaching an hour. Oops, sorry, bump you guys. An hour working on this. So yeah, I think, I don't think it'll be two hours. I think maybe, uh, I still maybe stand by that hour and a half, I don't know. Hour and a half, hour 45. I think this will probably be similar to the other ones this size. Oops, ah. got tangled there in my hand. So the other two, the other flower there and the two buds are the dark purple. So that's, that's next. quick, quickly, and then the French knots. I love doing those little, little guys. But yeah, I do always leave the French knots to the end when I can. I mean, if I'm in the area and it doesn't make sense to wait till the end to do a French knot, then I'll do them. But I like doing them last because then my thread when I'm stitching doesn't accidentally catch on it. And that's why I don't like the knots on the back of the embroidery either. I don't like my thread catching on it. So I think we'll start with the buds and then end with the flower. Just because now that I got these two purple, light purple flowers, I just really want those buds done that are in front of it. So we'll do those first. Ooh, 
Ooh, I think I may have, I'm expecting a UPS package. So if the doorbell rings any second here, it's, it's that. I feel like I heard the truck, truck door slam. <laughs> Maybe that's just wishful thinking. Done with the purple. All right, I think um, two more stitches here, and we're done with that. A little bit of thread left. I think this is a savable amount of thread. I, I do um, extra thread. I do have a container that I put it in and I, I make um, pom-poms and tassels out of it sometimes. Every once in a while. It is getting pretty full again, my, my um, little bag of that stuff though, so. It might be time to just hang out and make some pom-poms again soon. Maybe we'll have to make a like a pillow that we can put pom poms all around. Oops, <laughs> I missed my. See, I just like throw my needle at my needle minder, and I just missed, which is just goofy. All right. So yeah, so I think I'm. Well, you know what? Until my until all these guys are done, I'm gonna just like long enough thread that I could maybe use at some point. I'm gonna just save, uh, just in case, because I do have some purple and some other other of these flowers from the series and it'd be annoying if I had to get a new piece and I just needed that amount left. All right, let's do the dark purple. So this is the wood violet. I almost did a wood violet for this series. Um, I should do like a, like a foraging series or something or like a, like more of the um, wild flowers that grow on their own. So here's, here's the rest of this purple too. So I got that for another one. All right, so I'm doubling this up again because we're gonna do that loop method. So I'm getting about you know, 24 inches once doubled up, so like 48 total, I'm not really measuring. Oh, it's so fun to use a purple scissors though with, with like these purple flowers. Kimberly, I feel the same way. Kimberly says, I love getting packages. I always feel like it's a present, even though I know what it is and I paid for it myself. I know, right? Uh, I'm 100% with you. There we go. Got our single strand. So this is just a slightly darker color. It's going to be pretty subtle, I think. Probably more subtle than the diagram, but it's easy to easy for me to see the difference. All right, let's thread that needle. All right, we're doing that loop method again. So I got the fold on this side, and I was wanting to do these these guys. So let's start our back stitch, then head to the back, thread our needle through that loop and pull it on tight. And there we are, loop method of starting. That's it. Oh, thanks so much, Anne. And says these pl these flowers are so pretty. This might be my favorite one out of the the series of five um, of these spring blooms, although or of these first blooms. But <laughs> I kind of always think about that um, 
with the one that I'm currently stitching. So this is my favorite one right now, but as I stitch the other ones, those ones might be my favorite. We'll see. Hey, Harm uh, Sewing. Oh, Harm So Amazing. <laughs> Hope you're doing well today. Yeah, so it's subtle, subtly purple, darker purple. I was gonna say purplier, but <laughs> I don't know why this would be purplier than the other ones, other, other one, but it is subtle. I am gonna look up um, this flower, I got the crocus again though, and just see the gradient of color or what the petals look like in more detail versus just like outlining because it would be fun to to um, thread paint this. All these colors make me excited for spring. Yes, I like this. This is, um, I like these colors, especially when we have that pop of orange. So we're going to have this orange uh, for the, all the dots, all the little French knots. So that'll be That'll be my last little color to this. So I might, so I'm, I'm gonna end up down here, but I might like travel through the back of these stitches to start, because I, I don't think I'll be out of thread by the time I'm done with these two. Um, so I'll travel in the back of the stitches so I don't have like a big jump that I can see cutting through. Um, but yeah, just getting ahead of myself, planning, planning ahead a little bit. Yeah, I like, um, I like these two purples together. They are just subtly different, just, just a little bit. I like it. So let's see, it's Thursday, so I'm just thinking about our lives in the evening. If we did do um, did do some thread painting on something like this, it definitely would not get done in those two days. <laughs> so I don't know, I'll have to think on that a little bit. We'll see, I have so many unfinished projects. Um, I also kind of wanted to do work on the, um, the leader and ender project a little bit, do some sewing or cutting for that. So I'll see where I'm at with that. But now I want to start, I want to do another, um, another thread painting project. I think that'd be just fun. All right. Yep. So I'm just kind of tra traveled up the top there and I'm gonna just kind of travel behind these stitches there we go and now I think I'm close enough to start start these with my leftover floss definitely we'll have to get another piece out but I was already expecting to do that since the whole flowers kind of seemed like they took a whole whole piece it's always fun to get a few extra stitches in. Let's go this way. I think I'll be able to make it all around this petal. Oh man, it is so gloomy out, you guys. I think I'll, you know, I'm still gonna go for my walk. <laughs> I think, uh, but I already bundled up. I should have just gone, oops. I should have gone for my walk when I went out earlier. Cause just that act of bundling, um, getting all that clothing on again is getting to be tedious. Hey, 
maybe Saturday it'll be bright and sunny and then I can have the, <laughs> I was going to say the window open. I meant the shade open. There's no way I'll be able to have a window open. But it'd be nice to have the shade open and have some sunshine come through here. Although it is very pretty um, diffused light, <laughs> I should say, outside now. If you want to take some nice photos, head outside. Uh, they'll just be chilly photos. All right, I think I can get these two stitches in, and I think I might be able to get to the top and do a few more. I think it's just like yeah I'm gonna still go in the back of some stitches here but I think it's just like a tiny little stitch here there we are Ooh, I think we can get this whole petal still yeah. dang that um purple went went a ways we're gonna have a lot of extra of this purple, um, I think. Oh, Justin says, I love these colors together. Um, all the thread colors are beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, is there, oh, is there an estimate of how many total skeins to finish our alpha book quilt? I don't actually have that. And that's kind of, um, by going through this process, I'm hoping to have a more accurate feel on that. Um, You know what? Maybe I think maybe on our next one, I'll do a better sense of measuring. Like I'll just actually measure each piece that we use because I bet you I could do an estimate after that. Because I think most of the designs are about pretty comparable to each other as far as like how much thread it uses, I'm thinking. Um, especially, you know, with the satin stitch letters, I'll, I'll measure all that. Uh, and then then I can get a sense of of all of it, maybe. But yeah, I think you'll definitely need more than the starter pack of floss. But if you have any scrap floss as well, um, feel free to use use that. I think it's going to be a, like a great kind of scrap buster for excess excess um, floss because you can't really play around with with colors and and all that. Oh my gosh, I'm getting way farther on this guy. <laughs> I'm going to hardly need anything for another um, another bit. I think I might even just, I won't even take a full piece, maybe. I'll, I'll, I'll take the full piece out, but maybe I'll just cut a little bit so I can still do the loop method. Um, but I'm not going to need the whole piece for sure. Because I only have one little petal left to do. Crazy. I'm going to try and get this last stitch though. I'm getting pretty short here, but I don't want to finish it. Jeez, I did all that except for that one petal. Crazy. Yeah, so we'll we'll get a shorter piece. Oh, it's pretty from the back. I like the back. Yeah, right. And so, like I said, I'm going to get the full piece out of here, but then I think I'm going to just trim, trim it down. There we go. So let's see if I fold this in half, how much do I think I'll need? I don't want to like have two less either. Uh, maybe like this. Let's, let's go for it. So then there's enough left over that I can still kind of fold in half for like one of the other projects that I might need a little excess for, but then I'm not like using it all up. That's my theory at least, we'll see. All 
Okay. Let's do the loop method. So I probably won't do the loop method for the French. Well, actually, no, I got a, I got another way to do the loop method. Ha! So I forgot about this way. So I will use the loop method for the French knots. It's not going to be exactly the same. So here we go. Loop method. There we go. Ready to stitch. It won't be exactly the same, but it's still, it's like a variation on how you can use this loop method. I don't want to do the loop method like I've done with the back stitch because a French knot is, it's not, I'm not going to go up and down in the same hole, but the holes are going to be very close to one another and I don't want to, um, like, I don't want it to break the fabric or anything. I don't think it would, but just as a backup. But I got a different idea. So once I finish this guy, we'll get, we'll get onto that. I still had way too much thread. Oh well. Better safe than store. Sorry, I didn't want to have like one stitch too little. Yay, pretty. All right, let's weave in that end. Still always counting out loud. Three. And again, I'll keep, well, I don't know. This one might go to the scrap pile. I think so. Not quite long enough. All right, so let's, uh, we need our, this is our goldenrod color, but here is the excess of this purple, so I can use that later. Here's a even little more tiny bit, and the, kind of the full skein. So I'm just going to kind of keep this going for this whole project with the other four designs, because I'm sure some of the other ones especially use that green, and this will just kind of be my working, um, my working project bin, basically, while I'm doing this project so then I can like I can put this in there I can travel wherever I want to go in the house or whatever even though it's going to be right here because I'm going to do the rest um the rest on of these on Saturday but you know I'll I might want to move this tonight um for our live so it's not in the way so I like having it by by us all right French knots and we're done so I'm going to get my long strand again as if I'm doing the two the loop method and then again, I can use, I know some of the other ones use this color as well. And, you know, I'm only pulling one strand out of it. So um, there's, we'll have lots for other flowers here. All right, bop the end just so I can see the different strands. There we are. Shoop. All right, let's match up the end. So I am going to do um, the loop method for French knots, but instead of starting the French knot and trying to catch a loop, I'm going to do the loop first. So let's, I match up the ends and we're going to thread those ends. And that's going to give us the folded, folded side here. Uh, so I'm going to go to the back right away. So I'm going to start like, I'm going to start with these and then I'll just travel around to get these other ones. I'm going to actually grab the backs of some stitches here. So I'm just, I literally went underneath, underneath stitches. And when this loop comes, I'm going to just go around that loop. So there, I'm just, I've just looped myself around backs of other stitches. I think that'll do. That's still going to totally function. And now I can just start my French knots. 
So, all right, I'm going to start at this bottom one and we'll just keep going across. So I like starting on one side of the dot and then going into the other side of the dot so I'm not going in the same hole. So I'm, I'm using two strands of thread here instead of, you know, I usually stitch with three strands. So uh, my French knots are going to be a little bit smaller. I could do three loops around if I wanted them bigger, but I think it's fine. I like it like this. Oh, Marcia says, I can't wait to get these um, starting on the other blooms right now. Ugh, yay. Uh, let me know how those go. Yeah, so this will, so we'll have sort of 10 in this series after this. So I, I'm, I've been really, really have been having fun making and, and drawing these flower designs. Like the moment I finish like a set of five, I just want to do more. <laughs> they're just fun to, fun to draw. Um, and there's like, you know, never ending, like you could do flowers on, on anything or any location and all that. So it's just exciting. I'm having fun with it. So I definitely think we'll have more of these in the future and we'll just keep, and I like this style. I like that we just can keep adding to the same style and size. So um, yeah, I don't know. We did five already last year. Here's another five and it'd be fun to do like some regions and, and that sort of thing, different flowers in the future too. So we all get sick of them. <laughs> Ugh, this orange, this, this is the goldenrod color. Looks so pretty with this purple. I am really, really liking it. Okay. Um, so instead of just jumping way over there, I'm going to kind of meander through backs of stitches to get there. Hopefully just to hide, hide my stitch like this. I don't want you to see from the front that there's a big line kind of jump into the next spot. This is maybe overkill, but here we go. There. Crawl up there. There we are. Now they'll be a, a tiny bit hidden, I think. And we'll start in on the rest. I always have to set my hoop down to do French knots. It'd be nice to be able to hold it like this and do it. I suppose I could, but it would be annoying. Maybe I should practice doing that. And not on this one. I gotta, this one's gotta look good because this is, this is the one that I'll be using um, to photo the cover for the design. All, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm stitching the samples, the five samples, um, one of each of the five flowers so I can photograph them so we can, um, so they can be the covers of the kits and the patterns and stuff. So that's what I'm doing now, doing all the little sample pieces. So I'm trying not to experiment too much or try other techniques or other stitches and that sort of thing, just cause, um, this is going to be like for the actual pattern cover. Now we're almost done, you guys. Got a couple on this flower over here. So 340. So yeah, about an hour, hour and a half or so for, for this design. I suspect the other ones will be pretty similar. I mean, I am kind of, I'm not like relaxing on doing this. I'm just kind of going at it. Um, so, you know, if it takes you longer than an hour and a half, that's, not unreasonable at all. Um, but if you're trying to speed through it, then I mean, I've been doing this for an hour and a half so far. So that's, that's where I'm at. And if I would have done like a different method of doing those back stitches, like I've been just doing the stabbing method, like where I go all the way up and all the way back down. If I went the in and out method, like in the same motion, that's the sewing method. I probably could have been done sooner but I like the accuracy that I can get with, with the stabbing method. So I'm just sort of used to doing that. I'm traveling to this side again. Where do I gotta go? Oh, past this. See, I don't wanna go right across that, that pedal because I don't want you to see that. So I'm just gonna kind of go down and then back up uh, through the back of that pedal. 
All right, three more little French knots and uh, our first feller is done. So, okay, let's think. So this took about, oh, Helen, I want to do that. I totally want to do that. Helen says you could do fungi. I 100% I want to do that. I haven't drawn anything for it yet, but I, I do want to do that. Um, my brother and his girlfriend have a candle called Forage, and I kind of want to see if I can do like a little co collaboration with them and do like a mushroom pattern or a fungi pattern and then do that. Have the forage candle with it. I think that'd be cool. But yeah, so all right. So this took about an hour and a half. So if I have four more, that's four, five, six hours. So about six hours. So Saturday, <laughs> <laughs> be prepared for a six hour marathon here and let's just add a half hour or another hour on that in case I go slow <laughs> uh, but anyway so all right let's weave in that end and we're done with this so Saturday is when I'll I'll pick this up again not sure when hopefully before noon <laughs> but uh, really if you pop on any time during Saturday you know, I'll be, I'll be in the midst of it. But yeah, so I want to get, get these done, then photographed, and then we can get them all. Jeez, I missed, I missed tossing it at the needle minder again. Get them all ready to go. So I am going to save this little piece. This is kind of long enough that I could use if needed on another guy. And here's our excess there. So everything's on my little, little plate here. These guys can go there now, too. Let's check it out. All right, I just kind of stretch it in the hoop a little bit more. Ah, oh, pretty. Okay, I love it. Man, right now, this is my favorite one for sure. Love it. So just these colors together and the orange is just so pretty with that purple. Okay, you guys, that is it. <laughs> so let me show you again. Just um, this is our going to be our first bloom series um, again if you are interested at all it's not it's not available yet because these are just my samples but if you want to be notified when they are available it'll be available as a as a bundle as individual kits and individual patterns um, but if you go to my site and I have a link in uh, um, some places for the first blooms or if you go on the site, it's in our top nav, the first blooms. If you click the email me when available, uh, there's no, like, you don't have to buy anything or whatever. So there's nothing, you know, there's no commitment. Uh, but you will get notified before everyone else. Um, and we might, we're going to be doing a special sale <laughs> just for the people who signed up on that, that thing. So you'll be um, able to catch that uh, for the different patterns. So anyway, it's this, this guy is the crocus then we have uh we have the tulip here's here's the colors for that one so we'll have the tulip I got all my colors here even though i'll probably reuse some of the ones that i used uh, already we have the daffodil so all of these will be stitching on saturday grape hyacinth i like those guys these guys come really early in spring pop through the snow and then these snowdrops, which I think are going to be really pretty. Like, could you imagine just a field of these? Ugh, so pretty. And then we got the crocus, or like the snow crocus, um, done. So there we are. <laughs> awesome, you guys. So I uh, think that's it for me here. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll be here again tonight at 8.30 p.m. Central, just my normal, normal live time. And, um, yeah, we'll pick these up during the day on Saturday again. Um, so awesome, you guys. Thanks again for hanging out with me here today. Uh, I will see you uh, later at 8.30 p.m. Good evening. <laughs> Tic-tac-foe, hello. <laughs>